If you walk into any REI with an outdoor adventure in mind, you can usually find a piece of REI branded gear to go along with that adventure. But when it came to trail running, you can find shirts, shorts, even trail running vests, but you couldn't find footwear, arguably the most important fundamental piece of gear to get you out on your adventure. Introducing the Swiftland MT, REI's brand new trail runner. So the opinions I'm gonna be expressing today are all based on my experience in the shoes. That's the end. <laughs> like, why do I need, why did I need to keep saying stuff? <laughs> it's pretty cool to talk about REI trail footwear. The co-op got into trail footwear a couple times in its history, starting with some hiking boots about a year and a half ago. We know from research, from lots of interactions with customers, from daily conversations with people in store and on the trail, that our members dig running and they dig trail running quite a bit. So it's pretty awesome that we can kind of pull a product off the wall when we're talking to them about different trail runners and say, oh, this is the new REI trail runner. It's the Swiftland MT. Just so excited for folks to try it on and have conversations about it. The guiding design principle for this shoe is sustainability. There's lots of cool features on here from the recycled materials to the really intentional designs to the innovative things that we did to actually bring sustainability and push sustainability from a footwear design philosophy within the industry, which is awesome. If you pull up the box of the shoes, it actually tells you the sustainability story right there. And the big thing to know is that there's a recycled story and a bio-based story. We're doing lots of recycled materials in the shoe. Everything from the laces all the way to the outsole. You'll see that everything is double digits, 100% recycled laces, 100% recycled material on the rock guard, really rad. But what I think is actually a little bit more exciting is the bio-based portion of that because you don't have to recycle bio-based things. It's more sustainable in lots of different ways. But we do have bio based material in both the midsole, you can actually see some of the speckled stuff there, and in the liner that's in the trail runner itself. So really rad to have both of those things on there and cool to look in the box and remind yourself what a rad purchase you made. The second thing that's guiding the design of the shoe is really customer insights, right? Like when we decide to bring a product to life, we talk about who is this for and do we need to fill that gap in the market? And the way we answer those questions is we had over 110 participants do lots of field testing. I actually got to test this shoe out a couple times in different iterations of it, which was pretty fun. And taken all together, there was about 2,500 miles that were covered in this shoe and different versions of the shoe. Got lots of feedback, lots of data, lots of like impressions around the shoe. And people told us what they liked and what they didn't like. We comped it against other brands that kind of were doing similar things. And with all those insights, we kind of mashed it all together and we came out with this shoe, which is pretty great. And we think it's gonna be a really exciting thing for people to try on, especially we know that it's for our members who run. Just stoked to have it on the wall and stoked to get it on people's feet. So these are the Swiftland MTs by REI. The Swiftland MT is coming in at 10 ounces per shoe. It's got eight millimeters of drop with 27 millimeters of stack height in the heel and 19 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. So if we take a look at the MT from top to bottom, the first thing that you'll notice is probably the knit upper. You get that sock-like fit. Usually when you look at like a shoe with a knit upper, you have a lot of room to kind of move around in there and there's a lot of stretch. The name of this knit for REI is the Firma Knit, right? And that's really kind of true to how it feels. There's not a ton of stretch in here. Like certainly you have stretch, but not as much stretch as you might have in some other knit uppers. And that is probably intention of some of these underlays there. It keeps it from moving around a little bit more. But it's also probably the fact that like, you know, you don't have a lot of knit uppers on trail shoes, but they are comfortable. So in a trail shoe, you wanna be kind of like a little bit more snug in your shoe to kind of prevent you from moving around a little bit. So I think it's interesting that, you know, we found a way to kind of put a knit upper on there that doesn't stretch as much. So it kind of keeps you a little bit more locked in. But that being said, like compared to other knit upper shoes, this has less volume. It also is like, I think on the shorter side for length for most of the sizes for shoes that I normally wear. So I definitely encourage you to try it on. It totally makes sense that you'd be more snug in a trail shoe, but with less options to customize the fit on the shoe, it's probably important that you put it on your feet and see how they feel. You do have a little bit of a toe bumper here. It's not overly stiff and honestly, it's just a pretty light protective portion of the toe. So it keeps you a little bit more nimble, keeps you a little bit faster, but gives you a little bit more of that protection. 
Moving towards the back of the shoe, you have the pad on the heel, which again, you kind of move up and down a lot, especially on trail runs where the terrain is a little bit more uneven. So it's nice to give you a little bit of that padding. Gives you a little bit of that heel counter. It's not super stiff, but that same material that's in the toe bumper is kind of reinforced in the heel to give you a little bit more of that protection. You also see that the midsole comes up pretty high up on the heel, which basically gives you a little bit more of that like security and stability when you're moving around in the shoe. If we move down to the midsole as a whole, you'll notice here on this portion of the midsole, it's called the Terra Loft. So that's basically the proprietary, you know, bio-based recycled foam. And essentially what that does for the ride of this shoe is it's a pretty firm shoe. It's a pretty responsive shoe. So when you go down in it, even though it looks like there's a lot of cushion, there is, but it's not gonna compress as fast. It's actually got the durometer that's a little bit on the stiffer side. So for folks that are kind of coming from a hiker, perhaps, they'll kind of be able to recognize that feeling a bit more, or even folks that are coming from like a stiffer trail runner, it'll kind of feel like that. Moving down to the outsole of the shoe, again, we call this shoe the MT, kind of like a mixed terrain shoe, it's kind of like a go everywhere shoe. And you'll notice that the outsole is kind of structured in that way. It's not super deep lugs, not super aggressive, but certainly shaped enough in a way to get you kind of traction on trails, especially wet trails, kind of uneven trails, which is nice. But when I did transition, if you're going from you know dirt trails to kind of paved portions, it's not uncomfortable in that way because it's so aggressive or trail specific that it makes it feel like you don't want to be wearing the shoe. So I think the outsole actually helps tell the story mostly of mixed terrain, probably most prominently in the shoe. My first impression of the MTs was I was surprised that there was a sock knit like upper on the shoe. I was surprised to see that there's a lot of midsole on there. And I was really interested, I was curious, I should say, on how the outsole would kind of hold up on, especially lots of wet and kind of slick terrain, jumping over wet logs and wet rocks and stuff like that that you'd find in the Northwest here. So overall, I was like, huh. Okay, it was a little bit like, it felt like a challenge to kind of put the shoe through the ringer and see what it could do. And so obviously I put the shoe on and saw how it felt. I was surprised by like the lack of overlays on a trail runner. That's something that I'm like not used to, which is comfortable initially. I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. It's different, it's interesting. We'll see what can happen there. So I took it on a local park trail and just wanted to see how it felt. Again, it's MT, it's mixed terrain. I've always liked the idea that can kind of go from trail to some paved portions without feeling uncomfortable. And yeah, initially I was just surprised as soon as I started taking a few steps in it, how stiff it was. I was like, oh, okay. When I looked at the shoe, I didn't expect that. Usually my experience in like stiffer trail runners comes from lower stack height trail runners that give you a lot of energy response and a little bit more like what I would envision as nimble. But this shoe like had just a ton of support and a ton of stiffness to it, which I thought was really interesting. So I've put 100 miles on the Swiftland MTs and yeah, I've taken it to lots of different places and done lots of different types of runs in it. Right now I find myself in a marathon training cycle, which for me doesn't mean a lot, except that I'm running a lot. I'm not like super organized about it or super rigid about it. But what I know it does mean is that I just wanna put lots of miles under my feet and I love being on trail. So this is a great opportunity to just kind of see what some of those runs would feel like. So I've done some stuff like in my local park where I could do like a couple of laps over a few hours, going from like 70% dirt to some stairs to some paved stuff, which has been pretty nice. Usually I kind of cringe when I get to the pavement. On trail shoes, I didn't feel this way at all. I'll actually, in fact, on that run in particular, choose to wear road running shoes because I just hate wearing trail running shoes on the road, but it's not obtrusive enough to where it didn't feel uncomfortable. It actually felt like, this is cool. You know, I just got a little bit of a pattern under my foot, but it didn't feel like, well, I need to get off of here. So it was kind of nice to be able to run in that way on those local trails. And then I got out into some of the more regional trails and that's where I can kind of bomb some hills down a few miles, run up some hills, kind of be, you know, moving up and down some switchbacks, which was pretty awesome. And yeah, these shoes got me through all of that stuff. You know, I, I love running downhill. And the nice thing about a shoe like this that gives you some more firmer feel underfoot is that when you run downhill, you don't feel like you're sinking in. I sometimes do this thing where when I'm running downhill and I feel really excited, I'll try to take a peek at my watch and see how fast I'm moving. 
I was moving pretty fast in these shoes, <laughs> like faster than I've like seen me move. I was surprised and that was after like maybe a couple hours on the trail. So it was nice that like the home stretch running downhill, I could just like see if I could sprint down and the shoe was like, yep, we got it. It's a quick turnover, which was pretty cool. I've also gotten to take the shoe out for like all day slow trail runs, which has been pretty nice, you know, six hours on the trail, running over a couple things, hiking at certain points too, maybe during some of the day. And I think the shoe transitions super well to like being a runner, a hiker, hiking the uphills when you're getting tired, bombing down the downhills, running on the flowy stuff, which is pretty rad. I felt pretty confident through most of it. I will say that, you know, obviously in the Northwest and on some longer trail networks, did get these in quite a bit of a water, you know, whether that was rain or whether that was stream crossings or things like that. I've never felt comfortable getting knit uppers wet because it's always felt weird. But, you know, when the water hits these, because I do think that it's not as stretchy and it's a little bit denser, it didn't soak in as much. It actually just kind of dried on. So it's this shoe is kind of interesting when it gets wet, I think, but it's certainly, you can see, it's almost got like an extra patina on there. It doesn't feel like it's soaked through and stained. It feels like it kind of stays on the outside and a little bit feels like it brings the weave in a little bit tighter. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but over a hundred miles, I've definitely felt like I've gotten a lot more consistency out of the shoe than I expected. And my perception of the shoe has like grown with my mileage, right? Like. I knew that when I put the shoe on, I was going to get a firm feeling underfoot. I was going to get a consistent ride and I was going to be able to kind of, you know, enjoy my run as long as my run wasn't going to be super gnarly or 70% in water, you know, definitely is going to let me have fun on the downhills, definitely going to let me feel comfortable on the hikes going uphill and getting flowy throughout. So I think the shoe, you know, being named the MT is a great thing because it certainly does a lot of different types of mixed terrain, but I feel pretty confident that the shoe is a true trail shoe and can get you to most places that you want to get to outside. I think the Swiftland MT is going to be a great option for lots of folks. I think it's going to be a really awesome option for anybody that's looking to make a values-based purchase, right? Like there's so much of a sustainability story wrapped up in this shoe that if that really speaks to you and you're looking to get out on the trail in any way, definitely try this on. Let us know what you think about it. But if you are a trail runner specifically that's looking for, I just need a trail running shoe that's for my local city parks, maybe some regional parks or some like crushed gravel. There's a little bit of pavement on there. You don't need a super aggressive trail runner, but that's what you wear normally. This is an awesome option for you. Still gives you lots of confidence inspiring outsole and still gives you that midsole support that you might be looking for. If you're a day hiker that's like, hey, I normally day hike in my backpacking boots, but I really don't need that. Again, the MT's lighter package still Still gives you lots of that trail specific features. So it could be an awesome option for you in that way. And if you're a backpacker, that's like, I don't need these boots. I just really need kind of like a supportive midsole and the outsole that's going to get me over the things that I'm going to encounter on my trip. This is going to be a great option for you in that way. I definitely think it's going to be a tick a lot of boxes for a lot of folks that are looking for new trail footwear. So that's my hundred mile review of the Swiftland MT Trail Runner by REI, but I'd love to hear from y'all. This is the first version of this shoe. If you can influence the future direction, what would it be? What would your dream trail runner look like? Leave a comment below, we'd love to read them. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah.